What's up my pre-calc people? In this video, we're going to tackle topic 1.11 or topic 1.11. Now, huge topic, lots of stuff going on, but one of the topics is how to find a slant asymptote in a rational function if there is a slant asymptote. And that's what I wanna talk about in this specific video. Now, to find a slant asymptote, we first have to make sure that there is a slant asymptote. So how do we do that? Well, remember we gotta consider n behavior. And all we gotta do is divide the leading terms of our rational function. And when we divide those leading terms, one of three things is gonna happen. First, we get a polynomial. Okay, great. The n behavior will follow that polynomial's n behavior. But here's the kicker. If that polynomial just so happens to be a linear polynomial, that is your sign, flashing red lights, that you have a slant asymptote in your rational function. All right, the second thing that can happen when you divide your leading terms is that you get a value, a constant, we'll just say b to be generic, but you get a number. That means you have a horizontal asymptote at that specific value, and your end behavior to the left and to the right is that value. The third thing that can happen when you divide your leading terms is you get an x in the denominator, which means you have a rational function. If that's the case, you automatically have a horizontal asymptote at y equals zero. Okay, well, zero. Okay, so three different scenarios, but only one of them leads to a slant asymptote. That is when, when you divide your leading terms, and not only do you get a polynomial, but you get a linear polynomial. Those are the red flashing lights telling you that you have a slant asymptote. Now, once you decide that that has happened and you do have a slant asymptote, to find that slant asymptote, all you have to do is perform long division. Take the polynomial in the numerator, divided by the polynomial in the denominator. And the result, the quotient, excuse me, the quotient of that long division is your equation for the slant asymptote. Now, you may or may not have a remainder as well, but the remainder through long division does not impact your slant asymptote. Basically, has nothing to do with your slant asymptote. But the quotient of long division, when you decide that you do have a slant asymptote, is your slant asymptote equation. So remember, it is a process. You can't just look at a rational function and say, yes, it has a slant asymptote, and here's what it is. You're going to have to do a little bit of work. So first, you do have to confirm that you do have a slant asymptote by dividing your leading terms and making sure that you get a linear polynomial. Then you can actually perform polynomial long division, numerator divided by denominator, and the quotient of that long division is equal to your slant asymptote. Let's look at a few examples. All right, so when we're looking at a rational function like this one, r of x equals 3x minus 5 over x squared minus 9, and the first question, or, or one of the many questions that could be asked of you is, you know, is there a slant asymptote? If so, what is it? So the first thing we have to determine is, is there a slant asymptote? So remember, we got to think about that process of understanding end behavior. So first, we're going to say, all right, I got to think about end behavior, because that's going to tell me if I have a slant asymptote, if I have a horizontal asymptote, and where they at. So first, to figure out end behavior, I'm going to divide those leading terms. So I'm going to take the 3x over x squared, reduce, and I get 3 over x. Now, 3 over x is a rational function. Now, what that tells me is that I, first and foremost, do not have a slant asymptote. What I do have is an automatic horizontal asymptote, I'll just call it HA, at Y equals zero. So therefore my end behavior to the negative infinity and to positive infinity is both going to be zero. So this problem doesn't even have a slant asymptote. Now the other thing I want you to notice is that the numerator degree is smaller than the denominator. You can't perform long division in that situation anyway. And to find slant asymptotes, you need long division, but I can't do long division, which is more evidence as to why there is no slant asymptote. All right, in this problem, we're going to start off with the same idea. Is there a slant asymptote? If so, let's find it. So let's see here. We're going to divide those leading terms to think about our end behavior first, x squared over x, and that results in just x. Now, there's two really important things that I notice. A, this is a polynomial, which means that the end behavior of my rational function will mirror the end behavior of this polynomial x. But the second and more important thing for what we're talking about right now is that it's linear. So when you have a polynomial function, when you divide your leading terms, and it's a linear polynomial, that is a sign that yes, you do have a slant asymptote 100%. Now, how do you find that slant asymptote? Well, that is where you have to do long division. So I'm going to take the x squared minus x minus 20, and I'm going to divide it by the x minus 3, and I'm going to perform the long division. 
How do I turn an x into an x squared? I'm going to multiply by x. x times x is x squared. Negative 3 times x is negative 3x. And then, of course, I'm going to subtract. x squared minus x squared is 0. Negative x minus negative 3x is a positive 2x minus the 20. How do I turn an x into a 2x? I'm going to multiply by 2. 2 times x is 2x. Negative 3 times 2 is negative 6. And then I'm going to subtract again. 2x minus 2x is 0. Negative 20 minus negative 6 is a negative 14. Remainder and quotient. Now listen to me really good right now. When you decide you have a slant asymptote and you're asked to find that slant asymptote, only the quotient of that long division is your slant asymptote. The remainder, the negative 14, does not have any impact on actually what that slant asymptote is. So the formula or the equation of my slant asymptote is y equals x plus 2. I don't need the negative 14. Now, if I was asked for the result of the long division, yes, the remainder certainly matters. But in terms of finding the slant asymptote, it is simply the quotient when you perform that long division. All right, here's another example. So again, I'm going into it saying, I don't even know if I have a slant asymptote. So how do I make that decision? Divide your leading terms and see what happens. And when I divide my leading terms, I get a 2x. So again, two really important things happen. First, it's a polynomial. That means I do not have a horizontal asymptote. Second, it's a linear polynomial. And that is the red flashing lights going off that are telling you that you do have a slant asymptote. And to find that slant asymptote, you have to perform the polynomial long division. So I'm going to take the 2x cubed minus 9x squared plus 4x plus 0. I need that filler there down at the end because I don't have a term out there. And then x squared plus 0x minus 4. I need a filler there as well. How do I turn an x squared into a 2x cubed? You need a 2x. So put a 2x in that 2x column. That's going to make a 2x cubed a 0x and a negative 8x when you do all the multiplication. And then, of course, I'm going to subtract. 2x cubed minus 2x cubed is 0. Negative 9x squared minus 0x squared is going to be negative, oh, excuse me, yeah, yeah, I'm right. Negative 9x squared, 4x minus negative 8x is a positive 4x plus 0. All right, how do I turn an x squared into a negative 9x squared? I need a negative 9. Negative 9 times x squared is negative 9x squared. Negative 9 times 0x is 0x. And then negative 9 times negative 4 is a positive 36. Go ahead and subtract. Negative 9 minus negative 9, 0. 4 minus 0x is 4x. And then 0 minus 36 is negative 36. I cannot turn an x squared into a 4x. That means I'm now done. Here is my remainder. And here is my quotient. Now, if I'm asked to actually find the result of the polynomial long division, of course the remainder matters. But right now, we're just talking about finding that slant asymptote, and it's only the quotient. So the equation of my slant asymptote in this rational function is 2x minus 9. So when I go to make a graph, I can make a dotted graph or a dotted line at, you know, wherever 2x minus 9 is. I can graph the 2x minus 9 as a dotted line, and that's going to be my slant asymptote. All right, not too bad. Let's look at one more example. Now, once again, we go into this example saying, do I even have a slant asymptote? And of course, I have to first find my leading terms so I can divide them because that's going to really be the tell as to I have a slant, a horizontal, or something like that. So what are my leading terms? Well, there's going to be a 3x squared. I mean, you can multiply the whole thing out if you want. It wouldn't be that difficult. But I only really need leading terms right now. So that's going to be a 2x squared. And when I divide them, I just get 3 halves. Now, that is not a polynomial function. That is a constant function, which automatically means, first and foremost, I do not have a slant asymptote. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 halves. Nice and simple. Now, if I determined that I did have a slant asymptote, then I would have to multiply the numerator and denominator out and go ahead and perform the polynomial long division. But by just looking at the leading terms, I get a constant 3 halves, which means I do not have a slant asymptote. I have a horizontal asymptote at y equals 3 halves. So no point in trying to find a slant asymptote when there isn't one. All right, so that is it for finding slant asymptotes. Overall, I hope you don't think it's too, too difficult. All you got to do is make sure you have one, then go ahead and perform polynomial long division to actually find the equation of that so an asymptote. All right, hopefully you enjoyed it. Be ready for the next video. Topic 1.1 was really big, so this is not the only video for it. So please stay tuned for more.